In this video, we're gonna take a look at some jazz piano for classical pianists. Hey, my name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me. I started out as a classical player from the age of eight to about 18, got interested in jazz, kept going with classical for a little bit, but mainly my focus switched to jazz. So I often get the question, it's like, how do classical pianists approach jazz? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's really about the harmony and paying attention to that and what you can actually do with that harmony over top in terms of improvisation. So we're gonna do a few things in this video. I'm gonna to go to the keyboard first and play you a classical composition. Well, it's not entirely classical, but it has a really classical feel, but it's a pretty simple tune. Then we're gonna take a look at the harmony behind that and how you would approach improvisation as a classical piano player trying to play jazz. Then I'm gonna come back to the grand piano and play you a performance of this particular tune. It's an Oscar Peterson song, so you've got that to look forward to. And then after that, I'll post a link to the sheet music so you can download it and start your own improvisation. Let's get started. I think one of the best ways for classical musicians to start to understand jazz, or for anybody to understand jazz for that matter, is to take a look at the music that you know and like, figure out the harmony behind that music, and then use that harmony to start to build improvisation ideas. In this video, we're gonna talk about the tune, You Look Good To Me, which is a song that Oscar Peterson played quite a lot. In fact, he would literally start with the classical version and then switch to the jazz version in his concerts, which audiences really like. So we're gonna take a look at that composition. So the first four bars goes like this. And I'm gonna to go to the piano a little bit later and play a version of this along with the jazz improvisation. But for now, let's just take a look at those chords. Now, I've written the chord above each bar. You can see the first bar says C because basically in the left hand, we're just playing a C major triad. And then G in first inversion. And then G minor. And then A7. So what does that tell us in terms of improvisation? Well, there's a number of ways to approach this. The first one is, what's the chord itself? And can I use other chord tones in my improvisation? So for a C major chord, you've got this. So that means right away you can use C, E, and G. But you can also use other tones if you build them in thirds. So for example, C, E, G and then B, and if you keep going up in thirds, you've got D, F, and A. So that's every note of the scale, just separated by thirds. Now, the only note that's not available really is the F, because it creates a flat nine with the third of the chord. But it doesn't mean you can't use it as a passing note. But if you're trying to arpeggiate, you can use most of those chord tones. Now, the next thing you wanna consider is what scale can you use on C? Well, obviously there's a C major scale. But jazz people tend to add an extra note into that scale. The extra note that we're gonna add is the flat six, which makes it a bebop scale, like this. And the reason why we do that is because it gives you an extra note which evens out the eighth notes over that bar. Okay, it's really important to understand you can use the chord and the guide tones from the chord, the notes from the chord and its extensions, but also you can use these scales. Now, in addition to that, people like Oscar Peterson use blues scales. For example, on C, he might do something like this. For the G chord, you're gonna play another bebop scale, it's just that the passing tone tends to be the major seventh. So G7. Interestingly enough, if you take a look at the second bar, this note is actually part of the melody. And it's really part of the bebop scale. 
which lends itself really nicely to improvisation. Then we're moving on to the G minor chord. Now, in terms of that one, I would say you're looking at uh, a bebop scale that would look something like this. Because the F sharp is in the melody, so you're starting on G minor, so it's the same as the G7 chord, except you've got a B flat. Then when we get to A7, you're going to use a bebop scale, same as G7, except now the major seventh is A flat instead of F sharp. So A7. You've heard things like this before. That's using the bebop scale. Bebop. Okay. So let's make a little bit of an improvisation on those chords so far. Just using the same ideas that we've talked about. Okay, not the greatest improvisation, but I'm trying to stick to the ideas that I'm giving you. So once you have the chords, the scales that are available, what you tend to do is try to figure out little melodies, but there's also some jazz language in there, like things that are pretty traditional to the bebop movement. All right, let's take a look at the next eight bars. So it's ended off on A7, then it goes to F minor, so F minor, I would say that would be your scale. And then C, we've had that one before. G7, we've had before. And then C to G to C. Now, the other thing that Oscar does in this tune is when you get to the G7, so from here, He does a 3, 6, 2, 5. E minor to A7. Well, let me play that with the root so it looks right on chordy. And then D, D minor 7 to G7. Or, or, or <laughs> a bunch of different G7 chords. So 3, 6, 2, 5. Let's play it from the beginning. And then when he solos, he just adds the 3, 6, 2, 5 at the end. So. So you can see, as you continue to go through the tune, you learn a little bit more of the scales and the chord tones and the jazz language, and it eventually turns into some type of swing improvisation or jazz improvisation.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to the real piano and I'm going to play you a version of this just solo piano just so you get a chance to hear how this sort of progresses from the initial classical into jazz improvisation. So that's a version of You Look Good To Me. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to post a link to the sheet music that we talked about in this video. And if you'd like the backing track as well, I'll post a link to that as well. All you have to do is go up here in the corner to download that. And remember, if you like the video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just hit the little bell when you do and we'll notify you of all of the upcoming videos that we're making. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please post them in the comments below. And while you're over at jazzmental.com, check out some of the other backing tracks and sheet music and tutorials that we have over there to help make you, even the classical piano players, better jazz pianists. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.